Hi, this is Mardi once again and welcome to my channel. Our topic for today is another amazing Filipina warrior of World War II. Siya ay si Florence Ebersole Smith Finch. Florence Ebersole Smith Finch was a Filipino-American member of the World War II resistance against the Japanese occupation of the Philippines. Isinilang si Finch na si Lorraine May Ebersole no October 11, 1915 sa Santiago, Isabela, Philippines, noong ang bansa ay nasa ilalim ng pamalang insular ng Amerika. Ang kanyang ama ay Amerikano at ang kanyang ina ay Pilipino. Bago ang pagsalakay ng mga Hapones sa Pilipinas, si Finch ay nagtatrabaho sa G2 Intelligence Headquarters ng U.S. Army sa Maynila. Doon niya nakilala ang kanyang asawa, isang Amerikanong marino na nangangalang Charles Smith. Unfortunately, Charles died. His torpedo boat was hit when he was resupplying American and Filipino troops who were stranded in Corregidor. Samantala, nagawang kumbinsihin ni Loring ang pwersa ng mga Hapones na siya ay Pilipino. Sa kabila ng kanyang hitsurang Amerikano, dahil sa kanyang kagandahan at sa kanyang maraming taon ng karanasan bilang isang stenographer para sa U.S. Army, nakakuha siya ng trabaho bilang isang manunulat ng voucher para sa mga rasyon ng gasolina. Ang kanyang perfectong penmanship ay humanga sa mga Hapon, kaya inilagay nila siya sa Philippine Liquid Fuel Distributing Union. Doon, lihim na tutulong si Loring sa pagpuslit ng mahalagang gasolina para sa mga pwersang gerilya. Walang idea ang mga Hapones na sinasabutahin ni Loring ang kanilang mga supply ng gasolina at inililihis ang mga ito sa mga lumalaban. For many months, Loring falsified records and stole from her Japanese bosses diverting to guerrillas as much as 250 gallons of fuel a week. One of the guerrilla groups she was helping was that of a certain Major Carl Engelhartz. In one of their missions, Engelhart and his company were captured by the Japanese. Luckily, Engelhart managed to sneak a message to Loring informing her of their location and that the Japanese were torturing them. Walang takot, gumamit si Loring ng panlilinlang at palihim para sa personal na ipuslit ang pagkain, gamot, damit at maging sabon sa mga may sakit na bilanggo. Itatabi ni Loring ang kanyang sweldo para makabili ng mga putol na karne, isda at pagkatapos ay ipupuslit ito sa mga bilanggo upang mapanatili silang buhay. Sa kalaunan, si Loring ay nahuli sa isa sa kanyang mga misyon. Bilang isang high-value prisoner of war, si Loring ay sumasailalim sa solitary confinement at torture. Ang mga Hapones ay walang kakulangan sa kalupitan para sa mga nahuli na taksil. Inilagay nila si Loring sa isang selda na napakaliit. Nagsukat ito ng dalawang talampakan sa apat na talampakan, ni hindi ka makatayo sa loob. When she was allowed to come out of the tiny box of a cell, it was for torture. Loring would be strapped and metal clamp would bite down on her wet fingers. Loring would be repeatedly electrocuted through these metal clamps while being interrogated. Katahimikan Walang ni isang salita ng pagtataksil ang lumabas sa bibig ni Loring. For many days, the box and the electrical metal clumps defined Loring's prison life. 
until the Japanese grew tired of her and decided she would waste better in hard labor. Loring was sentenced to three years of hard labor in Bandaluyong, where the women's correctional institution was located. After three years of doing hard labor inside the facility, the Americans tore through Manila in February of 1945. They liberated Loring at the prison. She was on the brink of death, emaciated with paper white skin and weighing less than 90 pounds. Following the war, she moved to Buffalo, New York, where she joined the U.S. Coast Guard. The pain of World War II had not left her when she enlisted in the U.S. Coast Guard Reserve. When asked why she wanted to enlist, her answer was to avenge my husband. Her Coast Guard superiors decided to investigate her background and they were shocked when they heard what Loring had done in the Philippines. She was the first woman to receive the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Ribbon, one the highest decoration for those who participated in the Asian Campaign of World War II. In 1947, Loring also received the Medal of Freedom, the highest decoration a civilian can receive. Noong 1946, muling nag-asawa si Loring, taking Robert French's last name. Sa natitirang bahagi ng kanyang buhay hanggang siya ay nagritero, si Loring ang nagtrabaho bilang isang sekretarya sa Cornell University. Walang sinuman kahit ang kanyang mga kapitbahay ang nakahula sa kanyang pinagdaanan. When she died in 2016 at the age of 101, almost everybody except her family had forgotten her war exploits. It was only when the U.S. Coast Guard announced a memorial for her that the whole nation was reminded of her heroism. She was buried with full military honors. In 1995, the Coast Guard named a building on Sand Island in Hawaii in her honor. In 2019, the USCG announced its intention to name their first response cutter for Seaman First Class Florence Finch. Thank you very much for watching. And according to Calvin College, no person was ever honored for what he received. Honor has been the reward for what he gave.